Hi everyone and welcome to Lipstick on a Rig. Today we're making this very simple wine tote. And this project is part of my one skein challenge where I see how many projects I can make using only this skein of yarn. And so this is a size four medium weight acrylic yarn and the color is eggplant. And I'm working with roughly 380 yards, but we will not be using the entire skein for this project. I'll also be using a size H or eight or five millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to begin by attaching the yarn to our crochet hook using a magic circle. And we're going to chain one and we're going to place six single crochets inside our magic circle. And if you're unfamiliar with any of the stitches used in this pattern, then please check the links in the description because I will have my stitch tutorials and my magic circle tutorial listed down there. So once you have your six single crochets in place, then you're going to pull on the tail to tighten the gap in your magic circle. And from here, we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. So we're going to skip our chain one all together. For row two, we're going to chain one and place two single crochets in each stitch in our row and that does include this first stitch where we placed our slip stitch and we want to make sure that we skip the slip stitch at the end of our row otherwise we'll be increasing by too much so at the end of your row you should have a total of 12 single crochets and at the end of your row, you're going to skip your slip stitch as well as your chain one, and you're going to slip stitch into your first single crochet stitch. From here, we're going to chain one, and we're going to place one single crochet in our first stitch where we placed our slip stitch, and then we're going to place two single crochets in our next stitch. And we're going to repeat that alternating pattern, placing one and then two single crochets going all the way around our row. And again, we want to make sure we avoid that slip stitch at the end. So we should have a total of 18 single crochets when we're done. And again, at the end of our row, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one and we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. To start our next row, we're going to chain one and place one single crochet in our first two stitches and then two single crochets in our third. And we're going to repeat that going all the way around our row. And when we get done, we should have a total of 24 single crochet stitches. And we just wanna make sure we avoid working in that slip stitch. And again, at the end of our row, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one. And we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. We're going to start our next row with a chain one and we're going to place one single crochet in these first three stitches and then two single crochets in our fourth stitch. And so when we get to the end of our row, we should have a total of 30 single crochets. And again, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one and we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to place one single crochet in our first four stitches and then two single crochets in our fifth. 
and we're just going to repeat that pattern going all the way around our row and when we get done we should have a total of 36 single crochet stitches. And if you notice that your pattern is sort of starting to bend, you might want to just set it down and flatten it out. And that was our last row of increasing. So from here, we're going to begin a continuous loop pattern, which means we won't be starting and stopping our individual rows, but instead our pattern is going to act more like a spiral. So we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one and diving right into the back loop only of our first single crochet, we're going to place a single crochet. And we're just going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch in each of our rows. And you can see here that your rows should be able to flow seamlessly. Right here is where we transitioned. So your rows are just going to stack on top of each other. So go ahead and place one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch in each row while we build the body of our wine tote. And I will meet back up with you at the top. And I went ahead and crocheted this for a total of 34 rows. So now we're going to create the handles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to begin by chaining eight. And then we're going to skip eight stitches and we're going to place a single crochet in the back loop only of our ninth stitch. And we're going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of our next nine stitches so that we have a total of 10 single crochets in the back loop only. Once you have your 10 single crochets in place, then you're going to chain eight again. And again, we're going to skip eight stitches and we're going to place a single crochet in the back loop only of our ninth stitch. And then we're going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of the remaining stitches in our row until we get back to our first chain handle. So we should have a total of 10 single crochets here. Next, we're going to dive right into our first chain of our first handle and in the back loop only, we're going to place a single crochet and then we're going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of each of the eight chain stitches that forms our handle. And once you get to the end of your handle, then you're going to dive right into your next single crochet stitch and you're going to place a single crochet in the back loop only of it and one single crochet in the back loop only of each of the stitches between your handles. So again, you should have 10 single crochets here. And when you get to your second handle, we're just going to repeat the process of placing one single crochet in the back loop only in each of the chain stitches that form the handle. And again, after you've placed your stitches above your handle, then you're just going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of the single crochet stitches between your two handles. And from here, we're just going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch in each of our rows to build the body of the handles. So you're going to be repeating this continuous loop pattern again for multiple rows until you get your handles to your desired thickness. And I crocheted five rows in total on top of my chains that formed my handle. So now make sure you're working at the end of your second handle so that both handles are even. And now we have two options for finishing off our wine tote. 
The first option is to place a few slip stitches under the full stitch for about four stitches, and then you can cut and tie off your yarn and hide your tail down the inside of your wine tote, and it'll look something like this, so it's not bad at all if you wanna do that. And the other option is to add another layer of single crochets so our wine tote is extra sturdy and thick. So if you wanna do that, then go ahead and place one slip stitch under the full stitch of your next stitch, and then you're going to turn your work around like this so that you can work in these front loops that you created by crocheting in the back loop. So from here, you're going to insert your crochet hook in that last front loop that we created. So right here, and you're going to place a single crochet there. Then you're just going to place one single crochet in each of the front loops in each of your rows. So again, since this is a continuous loop pattern, you won't have to worry about starting and stopping your individual rows. Instead, this is going to act more like a spiral. So go ahead and place one single crochet in each of the front loops going all the way down the wine tote. And once you've placed your last single crochet, then it's time to cut and tie off your yarn. And I am going to place a slip stitch in my next available loop, which this doesn't have to be a front loop, it can be any of the loops in your wine tote. And then I'm going to draw the tail to the inside of the tote. Thank you so much for working on this wine tote with me and I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day.